The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prices hit $2.40 a litre in Vancouver. They just jumped $0.10 cents a litre in one day in other markets. And what's the NDP Liberal solution? More price gouging. The costly coalition voted to triple, triple, triple the tax on gasoline and other essentials. The biggest price gougers in Canada are these two parties that form this costly coalition. When they do triple the tax, how much will it cost to buy a litre of gas across Canada? Hey, the right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, a number of years ago, Six years ago, this government moved forward to make sure that pollution was no longer free anywhere in this country. That is a core part of fighting climate change. But at the same time as we move forward with a price on pollution across the country, we ensured that we return more money than the average family pays out with that price on pollution in the areas in which it applies. Uh, that is how we ensure we are fighting climate change and putting more money in Canadians' pockets who need it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. That's factually false. His own parliamentary budget officer said that in the four provinces where the rebates exist, 60% of people pay more in carbon tax costs than they get back in rebates. And in six provinces out of ten, they don't get any rebate at all, even though the federal government will force those provinces to triple the tax after a vote by the costly coalition of the NDP and Liberals. How much will Eastern Canadian rural families be forced to pay in higher taxes on their home heating when this Prime Minister triples the carbon tax. The right Honourable Prime Minister. I know what Eastern Canadians are seeing right now, what they told me. They told me they're worried for the fact that there are going to be more intense storms in the coming years, that their kids and their grandkids are going to face a world in which extreme weather events are increasingly frequent, which will threaten not just their communities, not just their way of life, but their very future. The fact is, we need to continue to step up in the fight against climate change, something Conservative politicians don't seem to understand. And the model that we have of putting a price on pollution returns more money every year uh, to families uh, who need it. That's the model we have. That's how we're helping Canadians as we fight climate. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. It isn't working. He hasn't hit a single solitary climate target since he brought in this tax. According to the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland, Rural families will have seen an 80% increase in their home heating costs when the carbon tax kicks in there. 40% of Atlantic Canadians live in energy poverty. The Prime Minister can insult these people and call them polluters while he jets around in his private jet. Or he can recognize that heating your home in January in rural Newfoundland is a basic necessity. How much will he impose in extra costs on those families when he trickles? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, all Canadians want to see a better future for their kids and for their grandkids. And that only happens if we continue to not just uh, fight against climate change, but invest in the jobs and the transformation of our economies that are going to be needed to ensure good careers for them good opportunities for those communities and families. That's what our plan to fight climate change does. The Conservative Party chooses to deny climate change exists and refuses to put forward a plan to fight climate change. That's not what Atlantic Canadians, or indeed any Canadians, need. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister does not have a climate plan. He has a tax plan. His climate promises have been fail, have failed every single year and now with his tax hike on farmers i asked him how much that farm family would have to pay he didn't have an answer well here's the, the answer that family will pay more which means more of the food production will be sent other other ways to other countries where they have lower environmental standards that food will then have to be shipped trained and trucked back to canada at higher pollution and we will be more dependent on foreign farmers. Why is it this Prime Minister wants to drive pollution up, farm production out, and jobs down? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
could just as well ask why the Leader of the Opposition wants to make pollution free again. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that farm families, like all families across the country, are worried about their kids and their kids' future. They're worried about the land that sustains us uh, and this extraordinary country uh, that provides us all so much. That's why we need uh, to be better stewards of the land altogether, which is why we're moving forward with a strong plan to fight climate change that includes supports for farm families, supports for agricultural industry, as uh, we reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, as we create good jobs and a good future for all Canadians. The Honourable Member. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I wish the Prime Minister and his family a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, however, it won't be too happy for a lot of people whose costs have gone out of control. In fact, the cost of turkey is up 16 per cent. According to a one food per professor, cost of other items are up over 20 per cent, and one-fifth of Canadians will have to reduce what they put on the plate this Thanksgiving weekend. How much will the Prime Minister's tripling of the tax on our farmers, truckers and consumers increase the cost of Thanksgiving dinner for the future? The right Honourable Prime Minister. We know Canadians across the country are struggling with the global inflation crisis, and that's why we're moving forward with concrete measures to help out. After we propose the GST rebate that's going to uh, help significant numbers of families across this country, uh, the Leader of the Opposition came out criticizing it, but then fortunately reversed himself and is now supporting our GST credit. Will he now support uh, the low-income uh, dental supports for families? Will he support the rental supports we're giving? Kids uh, deserve to have happy smiles. Why uh, won't the uh, Leader of the Opposition help them with that? Yes. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, they won't be smiling if their parents can't afford a little bit of pumpkin pie for them at Thanksgiving dinner. Look at the cost increases that have happened. 16 per cent increase for the cost of turkey. 22 per cent increase for potatoes. Bread up 13 per cent. Butter 13 per cent. Cranberries 12 per cent. Bacon. 10 per cent. That all adds up to an unaffordable Thanksgiving dinner. The Prime Minister wants to make it worse still by tripling, tripling, tripling his tax on our farmers, our truckers, and ultimately our consumers. How much will that add to the cost of Thanksgiving? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, he wants to help Canadians, but he will not stand with low-income Canadians who want to give their kids better smiles. Uh, but there is another important issue that on Canadian, is on Canadians' minds, particularly Canadians' women's minds, as we meet here. If it were not for global news, we would not have learned that the Conservative leader has been purposefully using his videos to appeal to far-right, misogynistic online movements. These are anti-women movements, and they have devastating real-life consequences. Mr. Speaker, I call on the Conservative leader to stand in this House, take responsibility and apologize. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I condemned this organization and I corrected the problem as soon as I, it became known to me, Mr. Speaker. But I condemn, I condemn all forms of misogyny, including when the Prime Minister fired the very first female uh, Indigenous Attorney General. who had to leave politics, and I condemn him for when he dressed up in racist costumes so many times he forgot them all. We condemn it always, Mr. Speaker. The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the choice made by the Conservative leader in reaching out to extremist online groups into uh, you know, pulling in anti-women, misogynistic groups for his own political gain is one that he will have to answer for. I think women across this country want to know uh, why he allowed this to happen and want to see him take responsibility for it. The uh, Honourable Leader of the Opposition. 
I took responsibility and corrected it as soon as it became known to me. But the Prime Minister does not take responsibility for the extremism that he has funded. He funded a vicious anti-Semite to spread hatred online with tax taxpayers' dollars. He repeatedly, in fact, so many times he can't even keep track, dressed up in racist costumes for which he has not ever come fully to account. And he drove many women of his own caucus out of the party and out of Parliament altogether with his mistreatment of them. We condemn all of that behaviour. We condemn misogyny always and everywhere. And we ask the Prime Minister to finally do the same. Speaker, we have all seen the effective campaign that uh, the leader of the opposition ran to become leader, using online videos, uh, using uh, ways of reaching out through social media. We all marveled at his admiration of old wood. What we didn't see was that every time he put out the... Are we done? Prime Minister, from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, a lot of ink was spilled and a lot of admiration for the effectiveness of uh, the Leader of the Opposition's campaign to become leader, using social media, losing, using clever videos. We all marveled at his admiration for old wood. But what we didn't see, Mr. Speaker, was uh, his uh, choice to include deliberate reach out, reaches out to far-right organizations, including hateful anti-women organizations, to try and advance his own political gains. He has played too close to the line with extremists for too long. Now he's got caught. Will he admit it? Will he apologize? Will he take responsibility? The Honourable Member